Hey guys, this is Peter, and as you know, I'm a big fan of 5G home internet. I think it's the perfect last mile solution for many of us. Uh, it's created competition in markets that didn't have competitors before. So now I'm spending less money to get faster speeds and no bandwidth anxiety anymore. I'm now streaming in 4K with no guilt whatsoever. So uh, there is one thing that keeps coming up, and I think it has to do with those competitors. I think Comcast, Cox, Spectrum, and Fios have people out on Reddit, and they're saying, well, I would get 5G home internet in a second if it wasn't for that double NAT thing. Let's talk about that. It's a non-starter, I'm telling you. You can't play games on it. Well, that's not true at all. Let me explain what it is, where it comes from, when, why, and whom it's going to affect, and how you can even get rid of it. So let's jump right into that. I want to make this simple so that everyone can follow along because it is kind of neat. So let's jump right in. No matter who you get your internet access from, which, which ISP, they're all going to give you a single uh, IP address to the internet. It's your router that uses NAT or network address translation to create a private network. Now all your devices can talk with one another. They can share resources like a printer or a NAS drive. It's fantastic. But one of the resources it controls is that single IP address. Now all of your devices can talk to the internet. <laughs> wow, that's great. Now, if you were to plug a router into another router, now technically you'd be in double NAT, but that wouldn't be a big deal because each little post office would resolve its own traffic and it would go layer by layer, hop by hop, all the way up to the internet. Not an issue. In fact, they even call them hops. And the only issue that could possibly exist there is, yeah, you'd have a slightly more latency. For each hop, adds a little bit of latency, but not a big deal. Now, for most people, as I mentioned, this isn't a deal at all, a big deal breaker at all. I've used it for two and a half years, and there's been no issue. Uh, but for some gamers, and for some uh, people that have servers, and they want to create tunnels through their firewall, and they want to port forward, and things like that, well, there is an issue and it isn't caused by double NAT, although that's the error that is popping up. The reason that error is popping up is because they're unable to resolve where the packets are going. And the reason isn't double NAT, the reason is carrier grade NAT. Now, all telco providers, that's, you know, T-Mobile, AT&T, uh, they all have, it uh, doesn't matter, Verizon, they all had the same problem at the same time. See, when internet phones were becoming all the rage and everyone wanted to access the internet with their phones, myself included, uh, the providers were all running really low. The whole world was running low on IPv4 addresses. So someone came up with a beautiful solution. We're gonna share a pool of these IP addresses and we're gonna call it carrier grade NAT. And they're still using that. And carrier grade NAT is sharing IPv4s and the problem is because it's sharing a pool, it's unable to resolve its way up. This was no problem whatsoever when we had cell phones on the end, right? But now that we're taking an extra router and plugging it in where the cell phone used to be, we've created a network behind an unstable IP address. And that's where this error is coming from. Carrier grade NAT. So solutions might be, because there are some solutions, one, get rid of carrier grade NAT. That would solve it right there. Now, the only reason carrier grade NAT exists is because we're limited to IPv4 resources. So IPv6 will solve this when it comes out. So that's, that's indeed the problem. Um, well, I guess we could also get a static IP. And I went ahead and did that and proved that that does fix it. Now, before you run out and get a static IP, let me tell you that the agents at T-Mobile at least aren't quite ready to talk about static IPs and don't know a lot about it. They didn't even know about this would solve the carrier grade NAT issue. So uh, they all pointed me to the business line. So business line I heard a couple times and finally I said, yeah, give me a business line. I'll sign up for one. And they sent me a different router. It's kind of neat. This is a NC Go waveform. And yeah, it's their business router. And it does have these TS9 connectors to go out to my antenna. So yeah. I can just plug these in, and now I have a, can connect a four, to my 4x4 four four MIMO. Getting great scores, but I wasn't getting the speeds that I wanted. You know, I had to give up the network that I was attaching to. Now I'm attaching to their business-to-business -business line. So it's a different network. It has different resources, and I, I wasn't going quite as fast. However, I was able to get a static IP. 
Static IPs come out of Chicago and they come out of Seattle. And I was unable to pick which one it came from. So I now have a Chicago static IP. So my speeds aren't so great. However, I was able to solve the double NAT issue and serve my Plex beautifully. I think I'm going to keep this because it's kind of neat. And my kids will definitely be able to use it. We'll be able to watch the same movies. We have some pretty... Uh, uh, some interesting tastes. We have a lot of French movies. We have a lot of Japanese movies that we like to watch that just aren't on Netflix. They aren't on Hulu, but we can share that with our whole family. And plus, they could look at their baby pictures and listen to music and all that stuff. We have all of that there. Anyway, guys, there's the solution. That's the problem. And uh, there are some solutions out there. One of them is getting a static IP. I'm working with a VPN provider called Pure VPN. They do have a static option. I want to see if I can work with some high-end modems that do have some uh, VPN solutions inside and see if we can't fix this another way, something that's fast and, well, less expensive and more accessible. You don't need a business in order to open, <laughs> an open up a business line. Let's see if we can't make it work with the router we have. There you go, guys. Oh, and accessing some of those new network stuff, like N25 and N66, I thought they'd be like empty freeways, and they are, but they're just, the resources aren't there yet. It'd be kind of like going to Paris right now to see some of the, to take advantage of the venues that are going to be ready for the Olympics. They aren't ready for the Olympics yet, so yeah, the venues aren't quite there yet. So everything's still in progress, and I guess that's the update, but there are solutions. There is an understanding. It doesn't affect everybody, and if it does affect you, there are ways around it. I'll keep plugging away at this, guys, but there's the update. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Give this thumbs up if you understood what the heck I was talking about. And we'll catch you in the next one. See you soon.